75 volts. And I can, uh, I can whack one of those things, and it's kind of no harm, no foul. The pack is uh, isolated from our frame of our car. So even if I touch the car on one of these terminals, I'm okay. Now, if I put one hand on one and one on the other, we're going to electrocute me. I'll explode, actually, at 375 volts and 2,000 amps. I would blow up. Even to get maximum views on YouTube, I don't want to go there. Back to the charging thing, what we've installed here is some uh, one aug, American wire gauge number one, not one aught, um, cable that I think in these kind of links will handle several, several hundred amps. Uh, we're using a little bit lighter cable. This is uh, one aught that we're using for our uh, um, main um, battery pack trunk. Um, because uh, we're going to be at a higher voltage, about 375 volts, to draw the same power for the motor, we'll have um, a lot less current. Um, a lot of the, again, the online forum engineers will quote you the uh, current ratings on these cables. They're reading, or they're getting that from some tables that are normally listed in per thousand foot, or uh, some of them in per hundred foot. Uh, for 10 foot, it's a little different. Uh, it, it really is a, a length uh, function. You build up resistance over a certain length of wire. So for short lengths, you can do things that you can't do with uh, longer lengths. What I've done here is hooked in about a three-foot cable that will eventually reach to the front of the car. We'll probably have it up here on the hood in some little clips that will ride there normally, but you could pull them off and plug a cable in here. Now this is the negative cable. This is a welding quick disconnect. And it has a little cam lock in it that the other end you put in there and uh, um, simply twist it and it locks. And it's a very heavy connector uh, with a big hex nut that you tighten down on the cable. They're very easy to assemble. Uh, very thick insulation on the outside. Uh, you want insulation. I like insulation, but it gets cracks. Um, it can get moisture. I don't trust my life to ins insulation. So one of the interesting things about this approach is uh, I've got the negative end of a 375 volt 40 kilowatt pack um, that if I discharged it in a second, it, it's enough power to blow this building up but it's entirely harmless, I can touch it because I've only got one end of it. There's no closed circuit. There's no path through me to anywhere. In fact, there's no path to, to anything. I can bang it on the car, stick things in it. Kids can jab it with a ballpoint pen. It, it, it's not a problem. Um, it, it's not a, a complete path to anything. It's over here. Over here I have the other side. This is the positive end. When I'm plugging that in to the cable, um, I don't have the negative end there. You just can't physically have all this in your hands at the same time. A lot of guys like these Anderson connectors. Um, I've got one of those around here. I detest them. Here's a very heavy duty Anderson connector. and. Uh, I get equipment that has these on them. I detest them, and I detest them for two reasons. One, I've had them melt down and everything just come apart under uh, current loads, even pretty heavy ones like this. Uh, second, they are kind of hard to connect and disconnect, particularly after they get a little bit dirty. Um, and the third one is uh, I've had one blow up my hand. Uh, I mean, go off like a hand grenade. I was not badly hurt, and it was a number of years ago. But I've never really quite gotten over that I don't like Anderson connectors. But as you can see, you have your positive and negative right here in one hand, and another positive and negative right here in one hand, and you're in the middle trying to hook them up. People, this is a lot of power, and you don't want to do this. Uh, I know this is how they do it on the forklifts. It's, uh, these things are almost a tradition. I'm, I'm not going to have them on the car. I have to deal with them with some of the equipment like our uh, uh, Zilla, 
um, some of the Chinese chargers, um, but I don't like them. Uh, I'm uncomfortable every time I touch one. This, you have half the, the, you have one end of the pack in your hand. It's a very solid metal cam lock twist, and it goes right on there, and you're done. You walk away from it. Go to the other side and do a different one. This is this, uh, a set of these. These are uh, the males, which I'll have on the charging end of it. And this is the females that go on the car, simply so I don't have them banging into things. You uh, take this male and you uh, insert it and you turn it. And it tightens up with a cam where it's just a totally closed, solid connection that you can't pull apart, you can't get to, you, you can't do anything with it. That's all you have to do to release it. But I'm only dealing with one end of the pack. I've got my charge voltage here. I've got the negative part of my pack. Even when I hook this up, I haven't completed anything. Now when we go to the other side and do that one, there's something that you'll notice right away. I've got this one marked red for positive <coughs> with some mil-spec heat shrink, but this doesn't fit. I've used two different sizes of these uh, welding cable quick disconnects so I can't get them hooked up with reverse polarity. So this is part of our strategy for high power charging. We're gonna use a combination of chargers and a mother battery bank to be on the other end of this, but I'm sure we can charge this car in an hour and we can do it safely, but we have to do it at home with the mother load. Last week, we, uh, talked about DC to DC converters and why you need them. Well, you still need them this week. <laughs> and apparently we hit a nerve with our testing and description of uh, low voltage and low cost uh, DC to DC conversion uh, solutions. Um, we incensed the uh, IOTA fans uh, sorry, but that's how it came out. I've gone back and uh, done them at 150 volts and it's, there's nothing different. It's a piece of junk. I wouldn't put them in a car. However, uh, we've got a little different situation and a little tougher one with the Mini Cooper anyway. Uh, the difference is we have a 375 volt pack voltage. And that's uh, largely driven by our... Uh, choice of an AC drive system. They tend to be higher uh, voltage, although, again, last week we did talk about a very interesting low voltage um, AC drive system from high performance golf cars. The uh, MESDEA that we're using in the Mini Cooper um, will work up to about um, 400 volts and the higher voltage we can use, the lighter the weight of our uh, cables and, and wiring and so forth uh, to deal with that. It doesn't have to carry as much current to deliver the same power at the higher voltage. But that poses a problem for the DC to DC conversion uh, situation. Obviously our sure power 96 volt uh, um, model is not going to work on a 375 volt pack and in, indeed the Kellys, although they have a pretty full line, uh, they go up to 144 volts, I think 156 volts maximum on their, uh, their units. Um, you can't really, um, and the immediate thing people uh, lunge at is, well I'll just connect it to uh, the number of cells that would make up that voltage. Uh, get the Kelly 144 and hook it up to 144 volts worth of the cells and I'm good to go. Not a good solution. 
Um, again, one of the tricks with these lithium ion batteries is to keep them all more or less in balance. I um, likewise am uh, drawing a lot of anger from a lot of quarters with the uh, BMS uh, zealots, but um, again, I'm not, none of them have shown me why to have one, and I've uh, come across several um, pretty fiery meltdown uh, reasons not to have one at least as some of them are done. Uh, our E-Vision gives us a pretty good monitoring uh, capability, as much as I need while I'm driving the car. And um, on the Mini, we've added some uh, Amphenol plugs and built a test set where I can go